Hi, welcome to a very exciting uh, incident of Chili Chug. We're going to conquer the pinto bean and make it submit to where chili pepper will. So uh, stick around for a few minutes and I'll show you how to make uh, chili pepper infused pinto beans that even if you throw the chili peppers away, will be the best pinto bean recipe you'll ever make. I promise you. Check it out, we're gonna take these beans and we're gonna make something awesome, all right? So, uh, first thing to worry about, getting your burner nice and hot. This has been heated to like a, a medium. We're gonna turn it down pretty promptly once we put stuff in there, but medium's a good start because we wanna get a nice uh, little cook on all our vegetables first. Um, you're gonna wanna grab some olive oil. Oh. And you're gonna wanna grab our um, chopped up veggie mix. And so all this is is diced vegetables, okay? You're gonna wanna have an onion. You're gonna wanna have um, couple cloves of garlic diced up and you're going to want to have some peppers. Uh, I've gone for a mix of poblanos that you saw earlier and just a little bit of uh, red bell pepper to like add a little sweetness, a little extra oomph to the flavor. Um, and then we're also actually going to infuse it with a habanero but we're not going to put it in exactly the same way. We'll get to that. But yeah, so the first thing I want to do is get my skillet. Again, we got it, you know, heated up to a medium so it's good and hot and then uh, turn it down ever so slightly so we don't burn the olive oil or the veggies. So you're just going to want to add a little bit of olive oil to the pan, a little drizzle, probably about a tablespoon, and then immediately in with your veggie mix. Just got a little silicon spatula. Um, I think wooden spoon is probably the traditional means of slow cooking things in the kitchen. It just that's the imagery I get. But I I find the uh, I find the um, Silicon spatula actually works a lot better. It's super easy to manage. Um, it just glides across the bottom of the pan. And so, yeah, we're gonna keep the spurs on this until we get like a good little saute going. And so I'm cranking it up. I want my skillet to bounce back. So, you know, don't be afraid to mess around with your temperature. You know, it may, you know if, if you're here in front of a camera, it makes you look like you're not confident, but that's okay. It's more important to get the right temperature. Um, so as with other recipes, like I was saying, don't don't worry about the um, amount so much as the ratio. You want equal parts beans to uh, veggie mix, and it seems like a lot of veggies they're going to cook way down and become very tiny, and so that'll be okay. It's just going to give our broth a lot more flavor. There we go. I don't know if you can hear that, but we're starting to get a little nice little saute on the vegetables, and so you're going to want to cook these. Um, when you hear that, when it gets to like a nice, uh, slightly aggressive uh, cook, you want to turn it down maybe just to like medium low, and just kind of keep cooking it. And after a couple minutes, you'll see um, a little bit of juice and water accumulating in the bottom of the pan. That's good. That means that the veggies are giving up, uh, are giving up their flavor, and. Um, It means you're getting a good sweat going. And so once you start seeing a little bit of juice in the bottom of the pan like that, uh, we're going to add uh, some seasoning. And you, you can change this to the seasonal of your choice, or you can make your own. Maybe, maybe we'll do a video on that. Um, but when I'm cooking beans, I'm very particular. Sazon Goyek and Azafran, the one with saffron. Make sure you get that. They have a couple of different ones. This is perfection to me in the pinto bean. It's just got the right amount of cumin, the right amount of salt. A little bit of color. That saffron gives it like a little, little something you can't quite place that's really delicious. And I've got two packets of it for what is about a pound of beans, give or take. And I'm just going to drizzle my, my seasoning packets over the top of just my veggies. Um, just like that. Make sure it's all out in there. And then just mix it in. Uh, what we want is for the vegetables to, to take on a little broth of their own, like a very a very small amount, but a little bit of flavorful broth. And they'll start cooking in that, and they'll get this great color on them. They'll start getting a really awesome, almost uh, taco smell coming from your your burner. And just remember, over the course of a pound of beans, all that will diffuse out. It won't be as strong. Um, it'll just make for a nice background to, to what you're doing. All right. And so we got that, leaving it on, again, medium. Just kind of playing it by ear between medium and medium low. And it'll be just a minute once we get those cooked a little bit more, um, we're going to add our beans. And there's different schools of thought on pinto beans. People will tell you that you need to soak these 
You put them in water and they'll sit overnight or for a few hours or something. I'm not trying to say don't bother, but don't bother. It's a waste of time. I, I don't understand. Like, the moisture gets into the beans when you cook them. Like I, so I, I, it, I've done it both ways. I have not noticed a tangible benefit of any kind to soaking the beans other than feeling like you honored tradition or something. Um, but I found that, that I actually like the results better when I don't. Um, when you don't soak the beans, you don't, they don't cook uh, quite as fast. And so you can stop them at a point where you have like a nice texture. I think the perfect pinto bean, you have like the perfect pinto bean shape. It's not broken down. You know, it's still tangible and whole as a bean. But then when you bite into it, it just is the slightest little bit of texture. And then it just gives them nothing. But they're just enough there to hold the, the shape of the bean. And when you soak them, I find that they break down a little bit. Um, and maybe there's tricks to soaking them. You do them in salt water or something. I don't know. I personally I don't bother and so your mileage may vary all right and so yeah now you got a little bit of like cool looking flavorful liquid in the bottom of the pan and the vegetables are starting to cook off the smell you're gonna if there's other people living in with you they're gonna come out and at this point and ask you what the smell is and when they're gonna be able to eat it because it smells awesome and there we go and so now I'm gonna add the beans and so we just I just try to distribute a little bit evenly, just for the sake of making my life easier with the spatula. And I like to steam them for a sec, just kind of spread them out over the top of the veggies, let them get a little steam on them. There we go. And from here, I'm going to wait a second. And in just a second, you're still riding, medium, medium well, on your burner, probably you're sitting about a four. Going back and forth between four and five, maybe a little six, maybe a little three. Um, we're going to talk about this. I'm going to infuse this with habanero, but I also want the other humans in my house to eat it. You know, maybe you have this dilemma where you want, like, spice, but you can't. you got to be real strategic with it. This is going to cook and steep in with the beans, but we're going to, it's going to be whole. We're going to leave it whole so it doesn't, um... Nice top and arrow in a pot of beans. You know, it's a pound of beans is a lot, but there we go. Now they steam a second. We're going to stir them in and get some of that nice same broth color all over the beans. We want them each to get a little coating. I think when you leave it in like that, you get a little bit of spice. You infuse it with a lot of flavor. You also get a really flavorful pepper at the end that you can eat. <laughs> um, but it's not as intense as dicing it up and actually having bites of habanero in the beans. Um, but, you know, if you're cooking for only chili heads or if you're cooking for only yourself or if you just don't care <laughs> which I can appreciate sometimes um, you can use whatever kind of peppers you want um, and if you want to tone them down a little bit you can you can take out the placenta and the seeds you know just cut all that stuff out um, if you're using like Carolina Reapers and stuff it may not be worth it because you don't really want to handle the insides of those too much uh, just because it's like a time bomb waiting to light up one of your mucus membranes anyway um, but yeah so we're cooking this for just a minute and we got our our habanero split in half and uh, just kind of keep an eye on this for, I'd say about five minutes. Uh, don't let it brown. You're not trying to, it's not Spanish rice, you're not trying to toast the beans. We just want to get a nice little mixture, a little bit of cook on the beans, just enough to infuse them with a little bit of flavor before we go for the long, uh, long, long boil. All right, so our beans have been sauteing for a couple minutes. Um, you can hear the nice, Nice cook happening. If I move them around, uh, it doesn't diminish the uh, the sizzling sound, which means that everything is evenly, evenly nice and hot. And so at this point, um, we come to the kind of a long part. Uh, first, we're going to add water, and measurements also not important here. Uh, I know it's just going to annoy the crap out of you, but I'm just telling you, you don't really have to measure as much as you think you do. Um, I like to give it almost as much water as the vessel can take. Like, you don't want to boil over, but you also, you'd be surprised that when we don't soak how much these can soak up. And so, uh, you're definitely going to want to not be shy with the water or you're going to be checking it and adding often uh, throughout. And so, yeah, we're going to just top it up with our beautiful jug. And I'm giving it up to, uh, covering the beans with about two inches of water or so to start. Uh, we may have to add more later. Uh, all you want to do now, we've got our water, we've got everything added. Um, we're probably going to want to come back in a little while and add some more salt and stuff. Pinto beans can soak up a lot of flavor, a lot of salt, before they get too salty. So we're going to want to come back and season this again. But for now, 
we've added our water at this point, we're going to start the long part of the cook. And th this uh, with unsoaked beans is going to take a little while. It's going to take a couple hours probably. But at the end, your patience will be rewarded. You're going to have a beautiful, tender pot of beans with rich, delicious flavor. Um, and this is the time where we're bringing it back up. I'm going to turn the heat up. We're about at about, a, you know, as I was saying, about a four to five for the most part. I'm going to turn it up to about an eight until I see a boil because I want to get these guys going. Um, and this is the part where you can add some aromatics uh, to the equation. If you want to put some bay leaves, you could at this time. If you wanted to add uh, some celery leaves, you know, something else to, to some peppercorn, something to give it a little bit of, of aromatic, you could. This is more of like a standard traditional pinto bean, so you can you can take it any way you like. You can add some ketchup at this point, some brown sugar to start the direction of, of baked beans. In our case, uh, we want to add hotness, so we're going to drop a, our split a habanero. We're just going to kind of submerge into the beans, and I'm going to rough them up a little bit just to make sure that uh, he understands his new life as an aromatic. Mix it in. And so it's going to take, uh, I would say, about 10 minutes for this to really get to the rolling kind of cook that we want it to. And so hang tight um, just a sec and we'll check in when it's time to kind of put it on a cruise control. Because we're going to want to watch it for a minute, don't leave yet. And then when you get to a nice simmer and it's kind of stable, then we're going to take off and find something to do for a while. So uh, hang tight and about, at this point about eight and a half minutes, uh, we're going to have like a nice simmer and we'll go from there. All right, check it out. We are at a proper boil. Um, took a little longer than I thought. Took about an extra 12 minutes or so uh, from when we uh, put in the water. But so far, so good. And so, yeah, uh, at this point, um, these guys are ready for the long haul. And so all I'm going to do is turn this down to medium low on your burner, probably like a three and a half. Um, we're going to let that simmer come down just a tiny bit. And then once we're done with that, um, it's going to chill for quite some time. So at this point, you can find something to do. You can clean house. You can you know, catch up on uh, internet chili head uh, hot sauce reviews. Uh, do whatever you want to do. But I'd say um, you're going to want to check at the hour mark. And we'll come back and check on that just to make sure you don't need water. Make sure the temperature is still good. But other than that, smooth sailing until it's bean time. And a little over an hour, uh, they've been simmering for a while. They're starting to get slightly, uh, slightly tender. Oops, but uh, we got a ways to go yet. But uh, as you can see, like the water level starting to dip, to dip below, like uh, the bean level, which isn't what we need. We need more water, and so I'm just gonna top it up. There we go. And uh, it'll take a couple minutes to get back to you know a nice good simmer. So I'll turn it up for a minute to you know seven, eight or so. Just keep an eye on it, and then when it's to a nice uh, bubbly simmer like we had it at before, we'll just put it on cruise control again, cut it down to like four or five, and uh, we'll check back probably at about the two to two and a half hour mark. Check it out, we're uh, two hours and 20 minutes into cooking the beans. The beans are starting to look very uh, delicious and bean-like, as you can see, um, and we're almost done. And so one of the last things I do, now that I know about how much liquid I'm working with, we are going to actually add a tiny bit more water, uh, just because you don't want to take the chance and burn them after all that. And then, I'm just going to add what amounts to about a tablespoon of salt. Maybe a half a tablespoon. Just depends on what you like. And what you're going to use them for. Like, if you're just going to refry them, then, you know, you probably want to put less salt because you're going to season them again. And I plan on refrying these later. So, yeah, we've added some salt. I'm still sitting at, at medium and cruising, and uh, I'm just going to keep going. I think we'll give it to about the three-hour mark, and we should have uh, some delicious beans. All right, we're a little bit after the three-hour mark, and these are ready to go. Um, most of the liquid is cooked away, and so we're left with just kind of a nice little like bean gravy. Uh, we can go ahead and take our uh, habanero out. It's given everything it has to give, I think. And you can kill your heat. Oh. And so, these are like nuclear hot. So we're going to wait just a minute. We're going to grab a bowl. We're going to taste them. And see how we did. And lo and behold, we have a bowl of beautiful, tender, flavorful, colorful pinto beans. 
uh, infused with poblano and habanero chili. Uh, so yeah, we're going to give it a try. And uh, but first, I'm going to kick it up with a little shake of my Hawaiian chili pepper water. If you're wondering what the hell this is, uh, go back a week on my channel and you can see how to make this. Not even a week, a few days ago, uh, we learned how to make a bottle of that. And I'm going to use it every chance I get because it's delicious. But yeah, let's find out how we did with our uh, our pinto beans. And I love the Sazon Goya because it gives it that beautiful, the saffron gives it that cool, slightly orangey color. Um, just to die for. And then we got our little habanero. I'll get a good little piece of that too. Yeah. There we go. Um, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Delicious flavor. Really, really good. Habanero's got a different, definite kick to it. Chili pepper water adds the infusion of Carolina Reaper and a little vinegar to it. But even by itself, just the right amount of salt, just the right amount of seasonings. You can really taste the cumin and the spices from the Sazon Goya. And uh, I can taste all the peppers too. The poblano comes through, the habanero comes through. Mm -hmm. I'm telling you right now, minimal effort. It takes a while, but it doesn't take hardly any effort. I defy you to make a pot of chili, uh, excuse me, a pot of pinto beans better than that. You might add bacon. My wife's vegan right now, so I'm trying to to be cool, and I didn't put any bacon. But if instead of the olive oil at the beginning, if you swap it with just some little sliced up pieces of bacon and cook it down for a minute, even better. But depending on your dietary preference, maybe that's not cool. But uh, yeah, thanks for watching. Uh, come back on Chili Chun. Yeah, all summer long, we're going to have fresh pepper eating hot sauce reviews. We're going to learn how to cook cool stuff with chili peppers. Uh, and we're going to have a whole good time. So uh, if you haven't already, click subscribe, click like, click the bell. You get notified when it's time to eat uh, something else that's super hot. <laughs> thanks for watching Chili Chun.